Welcome to this video tutorial on how to create a rendered sectional drawing in Vray for Rhino. In this video I've got this 3D model here where I've modelled quite a lot of detail with the structure and different components that we're going to be able to see when we cut a section through this model. Now to begin with we're first going to go to render, go to the current render and set Vray for Rhino as our current render engine. Then in Vray we're going to open up the asset editor and set the lighting up in the scene. To do this I'm going to open up my frame buffer here and I'm just going to hit the render preview button to see how that's rendering and as you can see what will usually happen is it will be quite bright. Now before I start to tweak any of these settings we're just going to go to the lighting, go to our document sun and make sure that's turned on so we can then customize the lighting and the orientation based upon this. I'm also going to go into the settings and under the background environment I'm going to click on this little blue tab and we're going to switch this texture just by clicking up here to a sky texture. Now you'll see again this becomes even brighter but if we hit back there we go to our lighting and then on the right hand side in our frame buffer we're going to click on this new layer we're going to load in an exposure and we're going to lower this exposure down to a minus five and there you'll see we're going to get our nice kind of sky texture in there. Now you can see this guy's got this kind of grey background, you can always customise this kind of grey component if you want it to be bluer, just by scrolling down here and clicking on this Oblido colour. By default it might be quite grey, like this, but you can always make it bluer just by scrolling up into that blue zone of the lighting, and that's why mine's looking a little bit bluer in this particular model. So once you've got your lighting as you like it, we can then stop that, and then we're going to apply the section to this model. Now to add our kind of section to the model, we're going to actually use a V-Ray clipper, which is a kind of V-Ray specific clipping plane. You can find this in the V-Ray toolbar under here, it looks like V-Ray clipper, or you can find it up here in objects in this convert to clipper where you can convert an object you already have. So I'm going to just click on my add clipping plane here and we're just going to draw it out as we usually would as a clipping plane. And there you can see it's being chopped. I'm going to rotate it and we're going to move it into position here where we're clipping our model so we can see some of that detail um, in that sectional drawing like so. And I think I'm kind of happy with its location there. Now with this particular view I want to look at it from the front view so I'm just going to switch from my perspective to my front. You might notice that it's not being clipped in that view. You've always got to make sure with that clipper selected you go into the properties panel and make sure you're ticking on the view you want it clipped. You can, can see here if I turn it on and off it's clipping on and off that front view. Then with that sort of centered we're going to load up our frame buffer again and we're just going to re-render to see how that's looking. And there you can see the lighting's kind of coming through my scene. Now a few things to note with the V-Ray clipping plane that makes it different to the standard clipping plane. If we open up our asset editor, go on to that clipping plane properties we have this little options panel here and often you'll see this effect lights option. So if I turn that off, actually what will happen is the light that's being clipped will be kind of dependent on the rest of the model. It won't just show half the lighting as you'll sometimes get as we can kind of see here. And what I mean by that is if we go back to the perspective view, you can see this a little bit clearly. Let's minimize this and we'll just rotate that around. And then let's open up the frame buffer again, you can see here. So with that effect light option ticked, you can kind of see here that the clipping plane where it's chopping the model, we're not getting any shadow by the model that's being chopped. But if I turn that off, you'll see we are getting that shadow and that shadow is being cast realistically based upon the full model that would be there. So even though this object's being clipped, you can see the shadow is kind of consistent in there. So if we're cutting through a room without many windows, like these ones at the top part of this model here, they're quite dark. And actually for accuracy's sake, you usually want that effect light option ticked off. So we're getting the proper lighting in the scene. Now, often when I do this, you'll see it becomes quite dark. And if we go back to that front view, we're just clipping around behind these windows here. We'll just turn that back on to re-render it. Oops. Okay, you'll see there that the kind of space is quite dark. So you might need to then go back to your sun and just play around with these settings to get the light kind of coming in at a nice angle 
that we can start to see it in this space. So you can see here as I'm tilting that angle we're getting the light playing on this back wall and that's the sort of effect I'm going for so it's giving a nice light into my rendered section there that we can see. And you can always play around with just in the custom orientation just until you've got the right look for the scene you're going for. Often actually quite a high light is good for this depending on if you've got kind of roof light windows or you want a low light if you want windows here and you want the light to get into it that way. So now we've set our lighting up, I'm now going to add a few materials to the scene. To do this, I'm actually going to use V-Ray's Cosmo browser, which has some built-in materials already there. So you can hit on this little tab on the left here to open that up. We're going to browse materials in Cosmos, and we're going to load a few in. And I'm just going to click on here, go into materials. Let's find some nice kind of wood materials here. And I'm going to load in this sort of honey oak matte wood, and we're also going to load in a sort of more sort of uniform texture. Let's have a look. Maybe one of these maquette woods or these plywoods here. So I think for this we want quite a fine grain and a slightly lighter wood for the rest of it. So I'm going to use this maquette wood here like so. And we're just going to load those two in for now. Once you load them in you then just have to hit that button there to bring them in and this button to explore them and then you'll see you'll get them in your kind of materials tab here and with those in I can then apply them straight to my layers so a really quick way of adding texture so we're going to take this honey oak we're going to apply it to a layer and we're going to apply it to my frame layer and then we're going to take this plywood here and I'm going to apply it to my board layer like so here we can now see those materials have been applied onto my model we just minimize one of these frames and we can zoom in slightly there we can kind of see them on that model like so now what you'll also need to do with these is also apply texture mapping because you'll find that sometimes the scale of these can be a little bit off when we bring them straight in so an easy way to do that to all of these objects at the same time is I'll usually do it by layer and you just right click on a layer click on the select objects option we'll just minimize this frame buffer for now with those objects selected, I'm just going to go to the perspective mode to see that. Let's go to properties, texture mapping, I'm going to apply a box mapping. I'm just going to draw this out and I don't really worry too much about the size to start with. And then we can set the exact mapping here. We'll just do it three by three, like so. And then if we go back to our front view, go back to our kind of rendered mode we can then start that render up. As another feature of our V-Ray clipping plane, we can also add a material to the section line. To do this, I'm just going to make a new material here. We'll just make a generic material. I'm going to make this white for the time being, and I'm going to rename this and call it section. Then to apply that to our section line, all we need to do is go to our clipping plane, click off this use material object parameter and set that material to our new section material and here you can see if we just minimize this down that we now have that white section that's corresponding to our material we can make that any color we want depending on how we want the particular look of our model to be so that was just a quick video on how you create a rendered section in v-ray for rhino one other last feature we can look at when using this is if we go into the perspective mode I'm going to turn this to a parallel view so we've got a slightly flatter model and what can look quite nice with this is if you actually have this rendered section on a slight angle like so so if we kind of zoom in here we can pan this around and you can see that if you just take it off the angle and off that sort of flat piece you get a nice kind of 3d look to your model as well so you can play around with where exactly you take this section and how your camera lines up to it as long as we're in that parallel view we're going to get a nice kind of crisp section line but you might want to get a little bit more of those sort of 3d elements in there to create this more of a 3d view so i hope you found this video tutorial useful if you want to watch any other videos please do check them out on the channel thanks for watching